We first got the call from the fire department dispatch. Uh, we immediately tried to make contact with PGB to confirm the events that were unfolding, as well as we simultaneously dispatched the fire department response units. So you had an engine company from Pahoa and a hazmat team coming out from Hilo. Uh, we felt it was prudent, based on what we were hearing from the dispatch, is that many citizens were calling in saying what they were seeing as far as the, the venting of the plume, as well as what they were smelling in the area. So we wanted to uh, get the emergency response teams out here as quickly as possible to assist in the monitoring outside of the, the facility and see what was happening in the community. So the, the units did respond uh, as according to you know, their protocols and began to, to monitor in the field and were basically picking up very minute levels or, or lower levels of uh, hydrogen sulfide. And as you saw in the newspaper articles, I did indicate that they had two readings, one of a one part per million and one of a three part per million, at least on uh, Pohiki Road in the, the subdivision. Other than that, their readings were showing zero on the monitors. Parts uh, per million or parts per million? Sorry, parts per million, thank you. Million. Per million, correct. Wow. And that's the, the devices that our hazmat team has. You know that's a thousand parts per million, right? Correct, yes, sir. Uh, the readings that they picked up were very shortly, I want to say less than a minute from what they were saying, as they would pull up to a site, they would monitor, and for the most part getting zero readings, but on those two specific readings, the, the presence of the levels remained for less than a minute, and they proceeded to continue monitoring the rest of the subdivision. Uh, we did, like I said, get some calls from citizens as far away as Kahana, continuing to report the uh, order in the area. And for the most part, uh, again, the units were just continue, continuing to monitoring until uh, basically we weren't seeing any readings at all. Early on, when the calls were coming in and people were indicating. Yes, sir. I was wondering if you could uh, comment on the discrepancy of how the concentration outside the plant was left by a factor of a thousand. As far as how did they come up, I, I couldn't. Right. You made one thousand. Yes. You know, I really couldn't explain how the concentration would increase in any particular area. Some of the experience we've had and, and what I've been sharing with the staff, you know, I just came back to uh, the county in January. And as Steve mentioned, I was with fire prior and retired, you know, about 11 months ago. Um, in the course of working with fire, one of the events that we were involved with was the monitoring of the sulfur dioxide emissions from Halimama. And in the course of doing that incident, over six weeks, we were conducting a lot of monitoring in partnership with the National Guard, Department of Health, EPA. And with that type of a gas release, we were seeing sporadic readings of high concentrations. We, a lot of it was presumed to be weather-related, wind-related, top topographical-related, where gas was collecting in lower areas. And so some of that we were looking at is, could that be similar to what we were seeing with the hydrogen sulfide in this event? The two readings that came in from the fire department uh, units, they reported were in low depression Steep. in the subdivision where it was below grade, where, it, again, we're making a lot of presumptions, but may have accumulated in that low spot. But again, we were not able to confirm as far as what may have caused or contributed to that accumulation or higher rate. Yes, ma'am. You mentioned if I remember right, a thousand parts per million. Per, per million, right? Million. Perfect. Yes. One part per million is one thousand parts per billion. Can you go over what the health effects of that is? Sure. If it were here right now, what would I feel? Yeah. Well, first of all, at those low levels, depending if you already have some pre-existing health problems, you may be more vulnerable. But obviously, at much lower levels, you can smell the product. You may have throat and eye and you know, irritation. But at those levels, it still hasn't re reached a level where the EPA has identified it as an acute exposure threat for a short-term exposure. So as far as other health effects, other than the irritation, and if you are maybe in the same more vulnerable to have respiratory problems, uh, I couldn't tell you, sorry. One more thing is, um, I was there when Ron came up and got the zero reading that we talked about, and um, I have a difference of opinion because I could smell the hydrogen sulfide. So if you can smell hydrogen sulfide, the lowest you can smell it at is, that I believe is three parts per billion maybe. Uh, it was stronger than usual. There wasn't an if and or about it. We could smell it. Uh, but the monitor is being zero. So 
Um, I have a concern about that, but I, now I didn't realize that the fire department had gotten one part per million reading or three parts per million reading. Now that, compared to your reading of 19 parts per billion, uh, just as an example, if somebody in the community that your high is 19 parts per billion, we have a, and that makes it difficult for the health studies and the health groups because we don't have a, a good monitoring system. We have a real problem with monitoring system. This thing has been going on for 30 years now since ACPA. So I don't think at this point um, that's acceptable. So, you know, I mean, if you were to ask me what I want to do and I know you don't want to, I'd say you have to shut that power plant down until you fix these other problems.